Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new RT1 Exchange video. Welcome to this channel where we explore together, we learn about, and we taste the wonderful world of wine. If you're not familiar with the RT1 Exchange, it is a wine investment and trading platform as well as a wine club. You should definitely check out the link in the video description to learn more about it. We're continuing our exploration of all the best wine styles produced around the world with this third episode dedicated to a country in the top three biggest nations in, on the planet and one of the most ancient ones at that of course we're talking about Spain today if you want to watch our overview of all Spanish wine styles first head over to that video right here today we're talking about one of the relatively small areas a small area that many may not have heard about that much because it is quite small if anecdotal some may call it in terms of volume of production when it comes to wine quality and reputation we're talking about today some of the finest wines on earth and certainly some of the best vinos in Spain so it deserves its own episode meet the wines from the Priorat wine region what's this all about let's go Priorat is a small wine region located to the northeastern part of Spain called Catalonia. You may have heard about it. That's the area around the beautiful city of Barcelona. We're not far from the Mediterranean coastline there, of course, although Priorat is not quite right on the coast. It's a little bit inland and we'll see how this matters in just a minute. So like everywhere in Spain, winemaking in Priorat is very old as the ancient Romans, as we know, brought in the wine culture to the country in ancient times. But in Priorat, it dates back at least to the 12th century when monks of the Carthusian order, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, established a priory there, or say a monastery called Priorato de Scala Dei, and they planted vineyards around the monastery to produce wine, that's what monks did back then, right? Yes, the name Priorat means priory, which is a type of small monastery. So like in Burgundy or Champagne, monks really kick-started the quality of wine production in Priorat. Vines are therefore often very old in this area that counts with very old vineyards that are called Veles Vineyards, understand old vines in Catalan, those producing the really top wines in the area. You'll see this mentioned Vineyards Veles often on Priorat wine labels. The two main grapes grown are typically Mediterranean and typically Spanish, that's Grenache or Garnacha in Spanish or Garnacha with an X in Catalan and Carignan aka Cariniena and the main style of wine is obviously you've guessed it red and dry some producers use a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot or Syrah often in blends whites and rosés do exist in Catalan but they're rather in Priorat but they're rather uncommon that's Priorat in short but you're gonna say Julian how is this different from any other area in the world or in Spain well, let me tell you, Priorat is really, really special. First off, as I mentioned before, Priorat is generally made on a base of Grenache and or some Carignan. It is in fact one of the very few wine regions around the world that make world-class Grenache wines other than what? You tell me, well, Chateau Neuf du Pape in France, you might find some high-end California cult wineries on the central coast that make some high-end Grenaches, but that's about it around the world. And if you're looking for a top Carignan, high-end Carignan, well, that's even rarer. So that's one. Secondly, Priorat is one of the only two DOCA, Denominación de Origen Cualificada, appellations in Spain. That's the highest title in the ranking of Spanish wine classification. The other being, of course, Rioja. So those two are, let's say, according to the Spanish classification, the two main Grand Cru's in Spain. In the way, while everyone knows Rioja, well, very few 
know the other top ranking appellation in Spanish wine classification, Priorat. And I'm working at correcting this right now by telling you more about it. More important than just the title though, is the terroir and the wines that come from it. Chest rock is the key word here. Vines are grown literally on the rock itself, on the slate layered schist rock with in parts underlying quartz as well. So a very rare type of terroir that is not found very commonly at all around the world. And it's got very steep and hilly terrain as well. So vineyards are on terraces, somewhat like in the Douro Valley of Portugal, but you know, steeper. It's also incredibly hot in summer here because we're on hilly terrain, a little bit inland from the Mediterranean, so sheltered from the cooling influences of the sea. Not only is it hot like it's often the case in Spain here, it's hot for Spain in Priorat and the little rain that rarely falls on the area is quickly washed away downhill on this steep, steep terrain. So vines therefore struggle immensely to grow and produce any grapes at all. Vines grow very slowly, which is why they get so old, somewhat like an old olive tree, can age for a very long time, centuries, because it grows so slowly. Same goes for vines here. So the few drops of liquid that all vines manage to pull out of the rock of the ground give birth to rare, very concentrated grapes with very tiny, small berries. Yields are just stupidly low in Priorat, often less than five hectoliters per hectare, while the Spanish average, if you don't know what that means, the average in Spain is at 25, so five, five times less grapes, way higher concentration than perhaps not five times more concentrated, but you know, very, very concentrated. Therefore, pure, concentrated, and mineral Grenache and or Carignan grape goodness could be the summary, the catchphrase to describe in short what is Priorat. The rise and the fame of Priorat on the international stage is actually quite recent. The region at some point in the past was judged just too harsh to live in and hardly economically viable, so it had been almost abandoned by locals rushing to greener pastures on the coast, you know, making their life a little bit easier. But in the 1990s, they saw a slow revival in the area led by a handful of small producers who believed in the potential of the area for winemaking and managed to bring the reputation of the local wines to the forefront really of Spanish wine classification by the end of the 1990s, reinforced by small, small producers, more players coming in all along the year 2000s, while local production was traditionally dominated by cooperative wineries, more small players, attention to detail, highest quality, here you go, Priorat was born. The base of concentrated Grenache wines in the blends give Priorat a unique, powerful, yeah, concentrated, but also very smooth intensity. Grenache can be super smooth. Huge notes of cooked fruit, cooked apples mixed with jammy berries and branded cherries, profound notes of savory licorice as well, tamed by the explosive fruitiness, deep aromas of tar as well make for a very complex, sweet, savory feel, always rich, always powerful, yet the old vines the grapes are sourced from, remember, provide this je ne sais quoi to the texture, to the tannic finesse. They're not just big, dense wines, they're subtle and classy. That's what old vines such century-old vines or decade-old vines on rough terrain, that's what they do. And also the mineral terroir, the chest, the slate, which are essentially compacted clays and the quartz infuse softness, density, minerality, zinginess, freshness, you name all those characteristics, they're all here, mineral, smooth, yet intense. The quest for excellence 
locally has led some winemakers to blending a little influence of Cabernet, a little bit of Merlot, a little bit of Syrah, just to give this extra touch of richness in a blend when they judge it beneficial. Not always, but some producers do. Producers use top quality French oak barrels as well now to add that extra further texture and elegance. As a consequence of all this, wines, well, aren't cheap. Let's say in Priorat, you can find entry-level ones starting at around $30, $40 to get a bit of a glance at the style, but the real classy Priorat ones come at a higher price tag, closer to the $100 mark and above. Because local growers do precision winemaking here, world-class style, they've started differentiating as well and distinguishing different terroirs within the area with 12 named sub-regions that you will see sometimes appear on the wine label, somewhat like what exists in Burgundy or Barolo subzones such as Grataiop, Sporera, Porroleda, and Torroja. There's eight others, you know, single vineyard type of single terroir type of approach. For a few winery slash wine names to have in mind, you can get a taste of Priorat for around say $40 with Torres Salmos and Alvaro Palacios Camins del Priorat. Those can be found quite globally easily. For top quality producers though, the highest rated wineries in terms of reputation, look out for Scaladei, Clomogador, Barone Barbier, Claude Lobach, Alvaro Palacios, Fincadolfi, Orlermita, Clo Martinet, Seller Mastoich, Terroir al Limit, and Clo Erasmus. Really just to name a few. I personally wish I had more Priorat wines sitting on my dinner table more often. They're really rare, but so Good. Have a deeper look into them and try one and let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you explore this fantastic area a bit more. This was your essential guide to start understanding the wines from Priorat. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel as we'll continue exploring more fascinating Spanish wines and do go beyond all around the world exploring all the main most beautiful, most fantastic wine regions in the world. We've gone through France, we've gone through Italy, we're going through Spain, we did Portugal as well. You get it. Make sure to stay tuned. I'll see you around in the wonderful world of wine. Salute.